Hi guys and welcome to a CDH card review for Erant and Giadan, a free CMC human angel Azorius legendary commander. For only one blue, one white, one generic, you get a two free with flash and flying and you may look at the top card of your library anytime. But also the cool ability here is you may cast spells with flash or flying from the top of your library. So one thing I've said on this channel quite often is that commanders are evaluated depending on what other commanders already exist that are doing the exact same thing. So for example Elsha of the Infinite is doing the exact same thing but you may cast non-creature and non-land cards as though they had flash from the top of your library. And that is just honestly better. We're also losing the color identity of red here. However, Erant and Giadan is only 3 CMC instead of 5. So that is definitely a difference. Like you can get gear at the human angel version into play quite efficiently. Like an opener with ancient tomb and a story signet will guarantee a turn 2 commander here. That's good. And once you start to get your commander into play, you can start to accumulate value here. But actually how good this ability is, is determined by uh, the amount of creatures with flying and flash that we want to play inside CDH. Something I often say on this channel, and I can't really stress it enough, is don't play a bad card just because of synergy. For example, you might want to increase the amount, the high ratio of cards with flash inside your deck just to make your commander more efficient. So you're looking at this thing like, well, this is a counter spell with flash enchantment, that's good, but it's four mana. That's a lot of mana. And by adding these bad cards means that you could accidentally end up with a bad deck. However, I don't think that is going to be a problem in this case. You see, we already have a really good ratio of good CDH creatures that we already play in other decks just because they are individually great on their own with flying. And even Mind Sensor has always been around, it's great. Ring Wingmare is absolutely amazing. Hush Bringer is absolutely awesome. Well, Hushbringer is a card that people don't really play that much because they are also on E to B strategies. But I actually think we're gonna be able to put together a strategy that breaks parity, don't really play that much E to B themselves. So we can definitely include Hushbringer in this kind of version of deck. However, now I need to make a confession. It's honestly really hard to actually evaluate this commander. Here we have the Magic the Gathering card database with all spells with flash. Hey, Archivist of Ogma, that's a good one. That's a really good one actually. Containment Priest, that's actually really good too. Dress Down is great, but that's not something you want to play. Snapcaster Mage, amazing. But what I'm trying to like showcase here is that there are a lot of really weird spells with flash. Here, finally, I found it. So truth be told, I didn't really know the name of this card. I just heard, I knew about its somewhat existence, like a 2CMC aura blue enchantment that is a creature interaction with flash. Mystic Subduel. Enchanted creature gets minus two attack and lose all abilities. Is this good? It, yes and no, I kinda? So there is a synergy here between these two cards, like if you have Mystical Subdual on top of your library, you can cast it in instant speed from the library with your commander, that's great, that's like card drawn interaction at the same time. But is is that good? Y yeah, kinda. Like it interacts a few times? It doesn't really interact versus Fazos Oracle, but it does interact with opponent's commanders usually. I'm a little bit torn. It's like, yeah, it's something you can play, but it's also like, should you? And that's why I, what I mean that it's very hard to actually evaluate the power of this commander because the amount of sp cards with flash are so many and some of them are a little bit on the unknown spectrum of are they actually good or are they, are they do they work, so to say. And it comes down to the simple fact that you can sit here and theory craft around this commander's potential a lot, but I think you really need to do it in practice. You need to play test this to see how it flows, to understand the rates of flash and flying that you need inside the deck, to evaluate how many you need, which ones are good, and such. 
I should point out that this is definitely 100% going to be a commander that is going to grow in power level over time because flying and flash are things Wizard of the Coast are going to print a lot of more. Now considering the pathway of like what we're including inside this deck it feels quite clear that we're making something of a control deck of sorts. Creatures with flash or flying that can interact in some form of way. Playing a very typical hate bear game plan and literally swarming your opponents with flyers. In other words, stacks and control. And I honestly think we have all the tools in the world to get there. Like we have a lot of different flying hate bears and a lot of different creatures with flash interaction. So now everything sounds great. We have a game plan and that game plan is probably gonna work out. We have a low CMC commander and a grindy card ability from that commander. But there's just one big problem. How do we win? Blue-White Azorius have always had a problem with the win con, the combo finisher of sorts. Now some might say, well, beat down, duh, just fly it into their face with your creatures until your opponents are dead. That's just going to take forever. It's not really going to work at all. You need something that achieves this, or something of the similar version to this. Because trust me, there are so many different ways your opponents can solve your heavy stacks creature deck with a few spells that just clean the entire table away. And then they win. So you need a combo finisher. And no, Felida Sovereign is not good. Six mana is quite a lot. And four to life at the start of your next turn to win the game is risky. It's very easy to interact with this. They can punish you in the face, which is possible or you lost life during the game somehow already, or they simply just remove this. Same thing with the Mon White spell Approach of the Second Sun, also just too expensive and too slow. We need something more efficient and faster. We also have the Mon White Stacks Helm of Peace. You combine Rest in Peace with Helm of Obedience, you pay one mana, activate Helm of Obedience, target an opponent, and you basically exile their entire library from the game, and then you kill a player by one per turn basically going around in a turn cycle one by one really bad really slow we need better and the truth is that mono white and blue together Sorius are lacking in this this so to say they aren't really that many efficient combos for them so it's like everything is more or less there it's just like how you're going to win is a problem the current best combo available for this commander is basically walking ballista and heliod sun crowned these cards are individually decent on their own like, you can play them inside your deck, they are not bad, they are not dead cards, so to say. Or, well, Heliod isn't that amazing. Like, it's an, buffing your creatures with plus one plus one isn't that good, but Walking Blaze has some interaction on its own. It can be used to kill creatures here and there. A big problem with this combo is that it's actually quite expensive. You need to dump a lot of mana into this to win on the spot if you have both of these in your hand. So you might need to put them into play one by one sometimes and that is telegraphed and that is drawing attention towards you when you're doing it. It's also not that fast. You need to use your blue tutors to search for the walking ballistas artifact version and you need to use your white enchantment tutors to find Heliod. You more or less need to basically draw into this combo to assemble them. So it's not great but it's it's what we have. Here's where this commander also could potentially grow in power level if Wizard of the Coast eventually, which I think they are going to do, eventually print a good Azorius wing con. Then we're onto something. We have a low CMC commander, we have only two colors, that's a little bit sad, three would be better, but low CMC, card draw engine from the command zone, a stacks game plan. We don't need to put a lot of bad cards inside this deck. We have enough really good flying and flash creatures to interact with the table. It's just the win con that we're lacking. So as a finalized review, I think this card is quite good. I think it's going to be growing in power level and become stronger. I also think this is going to be a really fun commander to play. And that is honestly one of the most important things in Magic. Play something you think is fun. We don't always have to play the best of the best. Now this is a CD channel and we're talking about how to make something the best of the best. But sometimes even I dirtle around with some of the lower power stuff just to see how they work and find themselves versus stronger decks of sorts. And in the end I actually do think this is a somewhat CDH viable commander. Like everything is there, it's just lacking a few key things that I think are gonna be solved in the future. Now that's it for me, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something from this. I hope this showcased a little bit about the CDH metagame of sorts, how it works, 
and what people are doing inside of it and what you need for your deck to function. Take care guys and I'll see you in the next video. More card reviews are coming up.